Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Airbus Beginners Tutorial Series. The aim of this series is to help get you in the air in the default Airbus A320 within Microsoft Flight Simulator and give you the required knowledge to simulate a flight from A to B within the sim. As the name would suggest, this series is very much aimed at people who are new to the Airbus, so we're not looking to learn every single system and procedure in minute detail. That being said, we will still try and follow real-world Airbus procedures as closely as possible. If you are looking for something a little bit more in-depth and a little bit more realistic, then please check out my other tutorial series on the channel, my Airbus procedures tutorial series. Anyway, now let's head to the flight deck of the A320 and begin the lesson. So, once again, welcome back to the flight deck of the default A320. If you remember from the last video, we just completed the flight deck setup and we are now ready for the push and start. To start the aircraft's engines, we actually use high pressure air. That can either be provided externally or much more commonly, we'll use the aircraft's auxiliary power unit. The auxiliary power unit, it's a uh, small jet engine located at the back of the aircraft and it can be used to provide high pressure air and electric power to the aircraft. So to start the APU we first turn the APU master switch on and then we uh, turn the start switch on. The APU will take a few seconds to start up and then we'll get an APU available indication on the APU start switch itself. So you can see the APU is now available which means it is supplying electrical power to the aircraft However, to provide air to the aircraft, we need to turn the APU bleed on. To do that, we come up to the air conditioning panel and we turn the APU bleed switch on. The aircraft is now providing its own electrical power, so we can now remove the ground external power. To do that, we come back up to the aircraft electrical panel and we turn the external power to off. And then we would ask the uh, ground crew to remove the external electrical power. Once we're clear for the push and start, we would turn the beacon on. That's a red rotating light at the top and bottom of the aircraft, which warns the ground crew that the engines are about to start. Once again, check that the thrust levers are idle, checking that the part brake is on, and we will now turn our transponder on. Next, we can release the parking brake, and we'll begin the pushback. To do that in Flight Simulator we can just press Shift P and we'll begin our pushback shortly. Next we can start the engines. To do that we come down to the engine start selector and we turn that to ignition and then we turn engine master 1 to on. You can then monitor the engine run up on the engine warning display. Ok, engine 1 is now started, so we can start engine 2. Same as before, we come to the uh, engine master for number 2, turn that on. And the pushback is now complete, we can set the parking brake. And the park brake is on. Again, monitoring the uh, engine run up on the engine warning display. So both engines are now running, so we come back down to the engine start selector and we turn that back to normal. And now the engines are providing all the air and electrical power that we need for the aircraft, so we can turn the auxiliary power unit off. To do that we turn the APU bleed off and then the APU master switch off. Once that's done we need to come down to the uh, centre pedestal, we need to arm the ground spoilers for the takeoff. This just means that if we have to abort the takeoff the spoilers will extend automatically. Set the flaps for the takeoff, so today config 1, and set the trim for the takeoff, and today we're using up 1.0. Once all that's done we'd call for the taxi clearance, however as I mentioned before we're not using default air traffic control in this video. So we are now ready for the taxi. 
Just before we taxi, we turn the runway turn off lights and the nose light to taxi. Part brake can come off and we just need a little bit of thrust to get the aircraft moving. Looks like taxiing out to the left is a bit of a dead end at the moment, so we'll taxi around to the right. Checking the taxiway is clear. And we're taxiing out for runway 27, so we need to make a uh, right turn. So usually on the taxi out to the runway there'd be some more workflows that we would carry out to set the aircraft up for the takeoff. Again in the default Airbus it's fairly straightforward, we just need to turn the uh, auto brake to max. That will ensure that if we abort the takeoff the aircraft will automatically use maximum braking to uh, bring the aircraft to a halt on the runway. Looking at the windsock, it actually looks like we'll be taking off with a uh, slight tailwind off runway 27. Usually you don't want to take off with a tailwind, however it's only uh, two knots, so uh, we'll stick with our plan for runway 27 today. So that's the aircraft now set for the takeoff. Once again a very abbreviated version of the real world procedures, but that does cover everything that you need in the uh, default A320 in order to uh, get the aircraft into the air. So we'll hold short runway 27, apply the park brake. Once again if you're choosing to use default air traffic control for your flight then uh, now would be a good time to call for your takeoff clearance. However we'll uh, pause the video here and uh, we'll come back in part 4 for the uh, takeoff and the climb. So I do hope you enjoyed the video guys and found it informative. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. That really helps the channel to grow and I really appreciate the support. If you have any comments or questions for me, please leave them down in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. But for now, thanks very much and I'll see you all again soon.